Hi, this is Mark Graven, and uh, to my friends from the Netherlands, I want to be the first to uh, welcome you to San Antonio, Texas, a place I've lived for uh, three years now, and uh, it's a great community. And we have uh, Toyota, we have a lot of healthcare providers. Um, I really expect and hope that you're going to enjoy your time here in San Antonio, the learning uh, and the opportunity to see a bit of our city and, and have some good food and maybe see a historic site along the river walk. But I wanted to <clears throat> share some thoughts that might be helpful in advance of your Toyota tour. Um, this will be, I think, my fifth time to the factory. Um, three of those times I've helped take groups of healthcare students and professionals and leaders from health systems to go and see the plant. And there's, I think, some upfront discussion um, that's helpful to um, help get the most out of the experience of uh, visiting Toyota. And we, we certainly appreciate them uh, allowing the community and visitors like yourselves to come and visit. So as we go through the factory, you know, the reality of any car factory is that we will see robots. But of course, Lean and the Toyota production system are not about robots. Lean factories in the auto industry especially tend to have less automation, Toyota has less automation generally than GM, Ford, and Chrysler, because Lean is really about people and teams and, and management and culture. A Lean factory and a really bad factory from the 1980s, they, they both had automation. Toyota tends to automate if a job would be unsafe for a human to do, or if the quality would be better by having um, robotic precision. So for example, in welding, a lot of the welding is done by robots. Some welding in a lot of auto plants is still done by hand by people because people are flexible. People have judgment. Um, there's a time and a place for that in manufacturing. So as we go through the factory, yes, there are impressive looking robots and trucks and parts moving overhead. And that's kind of cool to see. But the real essence, of course, of Lean and the Toyota production system is about people. And we want to see what principles we can take back to our health systems. We're not copying tools. Uh, a Lean hospital would not, of course, would not put patients on a moving assembly line. That would be uh, an unreasonable at a copying of a method. And, and you know what? A lot of lean factories don't have assembly lines. An assembly line is appropriate in certain circumstances, um, and you'll see that in the Toyota plant. There's other types of manufacturing and lean manufacturing that don't have moving assembly lines. So we want to be careful to not uh, get confused over what is just how Toyota builds trucks and what is the Toyota production system. So when you go to the visitor center on site at Toyota, before we get to the factory, they have displays about the Toyota production system. And one of the first words that you see when you walk in, of course, is the word Kaizen, the idea of continuous improvement. And it's a word that a lot of you may know this. It just basically means in English, good change. Now, Kaizen fits into what they display and explain as their Toyota Way management system. Taiichi Ono, one of the founders of the Toyota production system, the originators and innovators, wrote in one of his books that these are equally important pillars, continuous improvement or Kaizen, and the idea of respect for people, that these go hand in, they go hand, in hand. And you, know, you might want to explore and discuss and talk with people, what does it mean to really practice respect for, for all people, um, employees, customers, suppliers, the community, and to think about what that means in the context of a hospital as well. So some questions you might ask of your tour guide or talk about along the way would include, how do Toyota employees and leaders practice respect on a daily basis? What do they do that's respectful? What would they avoid doing that would be disrespectful? And I think you can try to look and see, you know, do the team members, do
do employees seem frantic or stressed? You know, how is the pace of the work? Because I, you know, I think one element of respect for people is that we don't overburden people. We don't expect them to work faster than they can. We don't want them to be uh, fatigued or overly stressed out. Now, sure, people are going to be busy, but there's you know a fine line of of being busy and productive, but not being um, overloaded to where safety and quality would suffer, which uh, was something that that we wouldn't want, of course, uh, to happen in a lean environment. So this is an illustration that um, you know, people from Toyota have used and described looking at their organizational culture. As they describe it, it's an integrated system. It's not just the tools, the technical methods, but it's also the underlying philosophy and the managerial system of Toyota that creates the Toyota way. And at the center of this diagram is the idea of human development, developing people, letting them learn and grow. That's not just a nice thing to do. It's not just respectful. It's good for the business to make an investment in your employees, to not just solve problems, but to also focus on developing people along the way. And Toyota often says that human development is the primary goal above solving problems or making things work better in the short term. So the risk when we go to any factory is we see tools, we can see methods with our eyes. And you know, it's a short, unfortunately, you know, it's a brief visit through the factory. You can only see so much. So you might see different you know, uh, evidence of different lean methods in place. I, I don't know if you would actually see a value stream map. That might be the one thing to, to look for or even ask about. Do they use that within Toyota factories or a version of what we would call a value stream map? When we visit a factory, the important things are beneath the surface of the iceberg. We can't see them above the water if we're in a plane or a boat or a helicopter. And you know, the, the, the part of the iceberg that's larger is the part of the iceberg below the surface. So these are the things that are harder to see. The management system, the philosophy, the culture, the thinking, the mindsets. You might see those mindsets represented in tools, but you may also need to uh, maybe need to ask or, or talk about that philosophy. It's hard to really understand just a short visit to a factory. So, you know, Kaizen is so important at Toyota. These are pictures from uh, visiting Japan and um, the Toyota Museum in Japan. Well, in that museum, they have a lot of displays about employee-driven Kaizen, you know, this ingenuity, this creativity. Um, what you see pictured here was a little uh, device that was built to, I think, always consistently uh, put four bolts in the worker's hand instead of having to put your hand in to grab four, where you might sometimes grab five or you might drop bolts or you might have ergonomic problems from all the pinching and picking up of bolts. So this is just one of, this is Toyota data, one of 430,000 Kaizens that have been implemented by Toyota in Japan that works out to about six Kaizens per person on average. So we might want to ask about these numbers at the, the, the San Antonio plant or for Toyota North America at all. Do they get that same level of Kaizen participation? Now, when I was in Japan, our tour guide told us about a, a Kaizen she had implemented. Now, in, in San Antonio, the tour guides are uh, people who have been working on the front lines of the factory, what they call team members. In Japan, they had um, kind of specialist tour guides who were from a public affairs department. They had never, she had never worked on the production line, but she had the opportunity to do Kaizen because that's their culture. And so I couldn't take a picture of it in the factory, but I drew a sketch afterwards. You know, as we were walking through the plant on a second level mezzanine walkway, there were um, little hooks that she could set her bag on to stop and talk and grab a microphone and explain that part of the factory to us. The installation of those hooks was her Kaizen idea. 
And she said, you know, she talked to her supervisor, the supervisor gave approval, somebody in the plant attached those hooks to the railing for her. And she liked that. Um, it, it, to her, it was better. It was a good change because now she wasn't having to set her bag on the ground. She had a hook for it. Now, this is a Kaizen that really doesn't make things better for the car buyer, for the Toyota customer. It doesn't really reduce cost, but if it makes her happier and more enthusiastic about her job, that means better tours, and that might mean the people who are visiting are more likely to buy a Toyota because they see the, toy gu the, the tour guide uh, being happy about their uh, role. Now, this is a picture from um, a factory, uh, a Japanese factory that's not Toyota. Um, but you'll see similar things, I believe, posted in the San Antonio plant of um, you know, simple documentation of Kaizen's before and after pictures, explanations of what happened. Uh, look for this in different display boards as we go through the Toyota plant. So you might ask some questions. Um, how do you make time for people to work on Kaizen? People are busy building trucks. How do you make sure that people are able to work on their ideas and that people are listened to? What's the process? What happens if you have an idea? And maybe ask the tour guide if there's a specific Kaizen improvement that they are willing to talk about. Now, one of the other principles that's, that's critically important in Lean and the Toyota production system is the idea of safety being a top priority. And not just having posters and slogans about safety, but really making it part of the culture. So as we walk into the factory, we're gonna walk under a green archway that says something like you see on the slide here, that safe work is the door to all work. Let us always pass through this door first. So this means you know safety really has to be the top priority. It's an obligation of leaders at all levels, and it's a way we show respect, the idea that we don't want anybody getting injured or hurt at work. And some, some questions to ask as we go through, you know, to, to think about how does safety performance, their measures, compare to previous years and to their competitors? And then look as we're going through the factory again, you, I, you'll probably see charts and data on the wall about safety. And, and what other information or reminders do you see about safety through the plant? Does it really seem like they make that a priority? And then in the tour, we can also focus on quality and how lean and the Toyota production system help ensure and improve quality in different ways. And one of those is, of course, the Andon cord, which you see pictured here. And the visitor center has a very nice display where you can actually reach up and physically pull an Andon cord. And here the chimes go off and see lights start blinking. So when you pull that cord, what happens? And you'll see this during the tour. You'll see somebody reach up and pull an Andon cord. And what's supposed to happen, and I've seen it always happen, is that a team leader will come over and ask how they can help. What's the problem? What can you do? So there's a time and a place to you know, solve the problem immediately. And then there's a time and a place to do root cause problem solving and uh, Kaizen. And it's often said, you know, at Toyota, when you're working there, you have two obligations. Come to work and pull the Andon cord. And if you're in doubt, even if you suspect a problem, pull the cord. It's better to pull the cord and then have the team leader come over and then look and see, well, okay, no, there's not really a problem. So then the line keeps running or the line gets restarted. And they put that power and that responsibility in the hands of their frontline employees. If they see a problem, if they've made a mistake even, to reach up and pull the cord to really help make sure quality comes first. And then there's also the principle of mistake proofing. And you'll be able to read about this in the visitor center. Uh, again, this is a picture from Japan. This is kind of a, you know, an old fashioned weaving loom, uh, which is the product that Toyota made before they got into the car business. So this makes um, uh, you know, fabric out of thread 
And the idea of mistake proofing or Jidoka, you know, built in quality means building in quality at the source. And Toyota's innovation was to create a loom that stopped automatically when it detected a thread breaking. So that means less rework, um, it means less waste. And this is part of the, the history of Toyota that's led to error proofing in uh, their factories and the way we practice error proofing in healthcare. So here's, here's a picture that shows, you know, if a cloth, uh, if the loom continues to run with a broken thread, you get a defect in the cloth, what, they, what describes here is a, a broken warp. Um, that's the defect they were trying to avoid and prevent. So this principle of judoka means, you know, equipment stops automatically if anything irregular occurs. You try to avoid ever producing defects and that you don't make people watch over machines constantly. So before they had invented these uh, judoka or pokeyoke error proofing devices, each machine had to be attended by one person who is standing and watching in case something went wrong. So with the judoka principle, one person could actually run multiple machines. So it not only improved quality, but it improved productivity for this automation that should be able to run on its own, and then it stops automatically. So there's a, another term that's used um, commonly, autonomation, which means uh, basically automation with a human touch because it can react. The, uh, the, the equipment, the machinery uh, can stop automatically, and that's how we build in quality. So a couple other points on things we'll see in the tour. One is what you call point of use supplies or Kanban systems. The idea that you have what you need, when you need it, where you need it in the right quantity. So some of the parts, and it's a little bit different in this toy in the, the plant here in Texas than it is in some others. In some factories, all of the parts were on racks, what they call uh, line side, but they also have what they call a kit. And this is explained in the visitor center, a kit of parts, a cart that rolls along with the vehicle. Um, so you know, they have different approaches and they improve and, and change the way they do things over time, which is great. But I think one of the other things you can see in the factory is that there are systems, people, equipment, processes that make sure the production associates and team members have what they need. You don't see uh, team members in assembly having to walk away from the truck to go search for parts. That's the job of the materials management department and the job of the replenishment system. So look at that and think about what that means in healthcare. So you might ask, you know, what percentage of employees are there to provide support in materials or other areas for the production workers, the team members. And you know, think about the leadership structure. How many employees does the average team leader or group leader have working for them? So when that team leader needs to respond to and on cords, they can only walk so far. So that, that scope of, of their leadership might be interesting to ask about. How many team leaders report to team managers? Um, that, that next group leaders. Group leaders is the level above team leader. Now, as you go through the plant, you're also going to see something that Toyota calls FMDS boards, which stands for Floor Management Development System. And they tend to post uh, performance metrics and goals and improvement initiatives under five categories, safety, quality, delivery, cost, and morale. And I think you know, it's really instructive to, to think about the name. It's not called the performance tracking system or the performance improvement system. It's called the floor management development system. The goal is to develop their managers on the floor to become better leaders, to become better problem solvers. And, and I think that's a great illustration of putting human development in the middle of what they do. So look look for these boards as you go through the plant. Sometimes as you're going through, they'll be pointing out things on the assembly line to the left. If you look to the right is where you might see these different boards. 
so you know the, the key philosophy at Toyota is the idea of developing people before building cars. And uh, we, you know, you can see if they mention that or um, to ask about what that means. And so, you know, we can think about in terms of safety and quality and other data, what information is being shared with employees and how much openness and transparency is there or does there appear to be within the factory? Then the final point I want to cover is the, the Toyota philosophy on uh, lean uh, or just, you know, Toyota's business methods and layoffs. So a growing number of hospitals in the United States have some form of what we call no layoffs due to lean policies or philosophies. Um, ThetaCare is one of those organizations. So when you're at the summit later this week, you can talk to people about how they use lean as an alternative um, to layoffs. There are far uh, better, more constructive, less harmful ways of reducing costs in healthcare. We can improve safety and improve quality, which leads to lower costs. When we lay off people, that, that leads to a, a lot of uh, disgruntlement. People might be overburdened. That might hurt quality and safety. And so back in 2011, you might remember um, the, uh, the earthquake and the tsunami that hit Japan. And there was a auto supplier in Japan um, that was not able to continue production because of damage um, that, that was suffered in the, in the earthquake. So what happened at factories in the United States? Well, General Motors was a customer of that plant. And as you see from the news here, you know, GM was temporarily laying off workers at a New York engine plant because of the earthquake. Well, Toyota used that same supplier. They had the same part shortages. What did they do? This is an article from Canada. Um, same time frame, same cause. Officials say there will be no layoffs. Now, it says here we anticipate some non-production days, meaning some days they wouldn't be able to build any cars. But what are the alternatives to laying people off? You pay people for training. You pay them to work on Kaizen and continuous improvement. You can do all sorts of things that invest in people and invest in the organization instead of just saving some money in the short term. The real question is, what leads to the best performance in the long term? So you might be able to ask, what do you do if a line breaks down three hours before the end of the shift? What do the employees do? What do team leaders and group leaders do? And then this is certainly not the case right now. What happens when sales are slow? So right now, the economy is pretty good. Uh, Toyota truck sales are strong. I believe they're running three shifts a day. Um, with, you know, previously, it had only been two shifts a day. So they're trying to build as many trucks as they can because they have customers for them. Uh, but what would happen if sales slowed down? I think that's a key question that helps illustrate the Toyota philosophy and the Toyota approach to management. So with that, you know, I hope you're looking forward to the tour. I'm excited to either meet you or to see you. Um, some of you I've met before. Some of you I'll be meeting for the first time. But I really do hope you'll enjoy your day in San Antonio. And uh, at the summit, I'll be with you on Wednesday and Thursday at the summit in Dallas as well. But if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free uh, to email me or uh, to reach out. And uh, we'll do what we can to make this the best visit that, uh, that we can possibly help give you here in San Antonio. Thanks.